Elliot Callan is the founder of Prosperity Financial Group, an investment advisory firm with over $300 million of asset under management. They have helped thousands of individuals, including busy professionals, entrepreneurs, and retirees, manage their money and also achieve financial independence. Elliot has over three decades of experience working in the California financial services industry and is widely recognized as one of the foremost thought leaders in the sector. He has received many awards, including the 2020 Marquis Who's Who Lifetime Award, Strathmore's Who's Who Award, and the Ronald Reagan Gold Medal Award. He is also the founder and president of A Brighter Day, a non-profit organization that provides scholarship funds and mental health resources to teens experiencing stress, depression, and suicidal thoughts. Elliot started the non-profit in 2015 in memory of his youngest son, Jake, who committed suicide at the age of 19, and it is helping thousands of teens and their families understand, protect, and sustain their mental health. And as we prepare to delve into our conversation with Elliot on the topic, Mastering the Four Pillars of Family Wealth Management, here is an exciting twist. Elliot, please get ready for a rapid fire round of random words. I'll mention a few and I would love to hear the first thing that comes to your mind in response without thinking much. And if you are ready, let's dive right in. Sure, here comes the first word, Elliot, out of the random words. Uh, curious. You can share whatever comes to your mind first. So you know, having a curious mind is something that I could tell you that my mother, my, who was an Auschwitz survivor from Europe, mm -hmm. instilled in her children to always be thinking and asking. And at the same time, you have a curious mind. You have a critical thinking mind so you can think about what the other person is thinking about and not think you only have the correct opinion. Here comes the next one. Invention. Invention is, I, I transfer that to be inventive, which means think out of the box, mm -hmm. think new, and think creative. Awesome. Future. Now, there's nothing more important than that. It's You're going to have the past, the present, and the future. You know, you want to learn from the past. You got to deal with what's now. But it's all about building for tomorrow, whether it's your family, your friends, your wealth, your business. It's all about tomorrow. Yeah. And then book. Book is great. Books. You can look at books two ways. One is, are you somebody who's well-read and you're taking that curious mind and growing? Um, and that's just great. I'm going to tell you that on selfish terms, I just had my my second book published mm -hmm. on July 4th called Driven, D-R-I-V-E-N by Elliot Callen. It's on the Amazon bestseller list now under financial stuff. So I, I'm a big voracious reader, uh, but not just business. Broaden your mind out to be wider than just business. And congratulations on that book. And uh, I heard it is already a bestseller and uh, wish it stays in the bestseller list as long as possible. And uh, we are going to publish the link to the book in the show notes. So for those of the audience that are watching or listening to this episode, please feel free to grab a copy. And uh, next word is movie, Elliot. Movie? Yeah. Like watching a movie? Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> entertainment. So I would look at that and I would say, what are you doing to clear your mind mm -hmm. as a person? And movies, uh, for me, classic movies are more important than current movies, but they clear my mind and I can become absorbed in something that's not happening to me. <laughs> Interesting. And the wealth? Wealth is different than richness. Wealth is what we're doing individually to create wealth for ourselves, create, create both monetary wealth and asset wealth for ourselves and for the people that work for us. Mm -hmm. So you've got wealth and you've got riches. They're very, very different. But wealth is you can measure. Riches is mm -hmm. a little harder to measure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got, got your perspective. And then prosperity. Prosperity is all-encompassing. All prosperity is, takes wealth and takes mm -hmm. your mind and takes your spirit and takes your charitable works and puts them all together and find out if you are a prosperous person mm -hmm. or if somebody living off the fat of your own gains. Mm -hmm. Good one. Tax. <laughs> tax, most hated word in I'm in California, the most hated word in America is tax. It's what you owe, no matter how much money you make. You always yeah. seem to owe that. Yeah. But other people, it's what the the government puts their hands in your pocket. That's tax. <laughs> Interesting. And the next word is uh, uh, saving. 
savings, what you can put away after you've paid yourself, your family, and all of your bills. Mm -hmm. So that's the pocket, whether it's a bank or it's a brokerage account or something else. It's the money that goes into the pocket that mm -hmm. you use for the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. A good one. And uh, last one is about a person. A person. That's you and I. We are all people on earth. We're all people here. Um, but a person is bit, not best, not just the shirt and the hair and the skin. A person is really what's here. What makes up a person, as my, as my parents always taught me, is not what you can see. It's what's in here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I resonate with your thoughts. And Elliot, thanks for participating so sportively and really appreciate it. And friends, uh, welcome to the Guiding Voice podcast series, where we embark on transformative conversations for a better future. I'm your host, Navin Samala, dedicated to making the world a better place through valuable discussions that add value to your life and your career. Thank you so much for tuning in. And Elliot, uh, once again, hearty welcome to The Guiding Voice. Thank you so much for being part of our journey. And uh, let's uh, dive into the conversation. And I'm really curious to understand your success mantra, as in the top three things that have contributed to your success so far. Thanks for having me. So I'm glad to be here. Uh, I think we, if you're going to come up with three words, uh, and you've got a target market of entrepreneurs and young professionals, I think if you're going to come up with a few words that describe what's in here, mm -hmm. you have to start with perseverance as the key word. Yeah. Uh, because uh, as I just wrote in a book, in a book driven, and so often leadership rarely, and entrepreneurship rarely is a straight line to success. It goes up and down and zigzag backwards. And sometimes it's two steps backwards for every two steps forwards. And, you know, that's part of life. So perseverance is going to be the, the first place you go. So have I have I got that? Uh, the second word is going to be fortitude. Hmm. So fortitude is how much strength of character do I have? What's in here? Because as you get hit in the head, as you get a bloody nose, as you come up with ideas that may be the first in your business, and people say it can't work, but you persevere in there. You've got the fortitude to see it through. That's strength of, of character. And the third thing is by itself, it's just plain character. Who are you? How are you going to leave the world a better place? How are you going to leave your family a better place? So those are three main areas that I work on personally that I want to make sure I have the right character. I never want to stop having my, my internal fortitude. Mm -hmm. That's what drives me. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that no matter how many times I sometimes take that step backwards or step on my foot or shoot myself in the foot, I know that I'm going to still move forward. Yeah, so powerful. And I can resonate with you. I think character is very important. And so is the case with perseverance as well. And perseverance uh, leads to uh, success for sure, because uh, it all depends on how far you can go. Right. And whenever there is a setback in case if you're stopping there, you can. there is nothing that we can do further unless move, unless you move forward with courage. Great, great perspective. And uh, I'm also curious to understand some of the toughest lessons that you have learned in your entrepreneurial journey. Well, lessons of an entrepreneur really have a lot to do with fortitude and character and so forth. You know, um, in a business world, mm -hmm. I've learned that success is measured many ways. It's not, it's one way is the most obvious way. What's in your bank account? What's mm -hmm. in your net worth? What's in your wealth? We do that. I've lived in California. It's the most me society that I've ever been to, exposed to in my life. If you drive a Porsche, I got to get a Porsche. If you have a Jaguar, I have to get a Lamborghini. It's me, me, me. You know, I, you're wearing a, a, a beautiful jacket there. Do, do, I'm looking at you and thinking, oh, why don't I have my jacket on? And and, <laughs> and, and a, a nicer jacket than yours. That's the me world of California. Mm -hmm. um, so the lessons there are... That's not a really a good way to measure success, but it is one way to measure success. Um, I'm someone as an entrepreneur who had a major setback in the fact that I have a son who took his own life at college, suicide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you have that, you you can get very lost in the day to day and you can forget so easily the big picture, where we're going, what we're doing. And that's, it's so easy because the pressure of the negative negativity. And by the way, if it wasn't that, maybe in business, you got your loan called, your investors yeah. left you, your spouse left you, uh, your children aren't talking to you. There are a lot of obstacles that an entrepreneur feels because you cannot be great at everything on any given day. And I know for me, 
I turned what I think was bad, really negative, or an un- endless supply of lemons into lemonade, as we call that in the, here in the States, yeah. because we wanted to turn a negative to a positive. And that's a key for an entrepreneur is can you turn a negative, a life lesson instead of a setback into something that you can capitalize on? That's mm-hmm. a great lesson. In fact, we also use that phrase uh, when uh, people throw lemons at you, make a lemonade. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Good one. And now let's talk about the core of today's topic or the conversation. It's about the four pillars of uh, wealth management. So in your opinion, what are the four pillars and how to master them? Right. So let, let's talk about pillar number one is, is is the early stage of your career, whether you're a business owner, an entrepreneur or a senior executive, the first thing, uh, first pillar is defining what success is going to look like down the road. Very hard to do in your 20s and 30s. Your brain doesn't really work like that. But if you can, it'll put you on track because you are at the the beginning phase of wealth accumulation. That's where you are. So if you're an entrepreneur, you're working six and seven days a week. Um, You're always trying to make it happen. You're trying to find the right formula to do things and you're sacrificing all types of things for that. You're not around your children. You cannot You cannot be, Naveen, a great spouse, a great husband, a great yeah. father, yeah. and a great business owner at the same time. One of them has to give all the time, yeah. at least. And so for most of us who are entrepreneurs and business owners, we can get exceptionally focused mm-hmm. on our business and forget yeah. the rest. And that happens more in phase one, in the first pillar, than anywhere else. Because you're starting, you're you're cleaning the garbage cans at sometimes two in the morning. You're you're sitting in bed, staring at the ceiling, yeah. thinking, "Am I? Can I meet payroll this Friday?" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. These are all these things that are happening, and now you're changing. We're changing that. Uh, so that's that's the first phase. The second phase is I've gotten beyond success. Mm-hmm. I've gotten beyond that, and now I want to make sure I'm growing and growing, growing intelligently, and I want to make time for my family. And I want to make time for me a little bit along the way. And I want to make sure the decisions I'm making in my career or in my business are sound, long-term decisions. I'm not, I still may want to grow. Like I'm always in growth mode for me. So no matter where I am, but mm-hmm. I want to make sure that I'm growing smarter because I don't want to make the rookie mistakes that I did 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. The third part is I don't want to lose it. Pillar number three is I've reached that point of success. Now, how do we protect it? What do we do to protect that success? How do we protect my business? Am, am I, what am I thinking about uh, maybe selling it? What's my exit strategy for my career? What's my exit strategy for my business? What is that? What does that look like? Uh, do I want to give my business to my children? Do I want to sell it? Do I want to work at this company for another five years and then retire? That's a phase that you're in on doing that. Mm-hmm. And the last phase is how am I going to distribute my wealth? Where does this go? So does it go to my children? I've worked all life for it to go to my kids. Uh, does it go to charity? I'm a big fan of charity and giving back. I mentioned earlier, character. Are you the person that's going to want a hospital wing named after you? Are you the person that's going to want to touch other people's lives in the most positive way, including your children and grandchildren? Are you going to, want to help fund them their college? Uh, mm-hmm. Whatever it is. All right. How am I going to do that? And then enjoying that money is also in the fourth pillar. And that is, what do you like to do? Is that is you now have more time than you've ever had? Is it to be a grandparent? Is it to travel more? Is it to see the world? Is it to play more golf in the United States or or, or go to more islands and lay on the beach and do nothing? Um, what does that <laughs> phase look like for you? Yeah. And then if we could define these phases mm-hmm. and come up with financial goals, now you can begin to find success within each phase. But if you haven't defined them, yeah. how do you know you succeeded? Mm-hmm. So it's much like a recipe. I mean, I know that I want to make this great recipe that I can define after I've made it, if I've hit my standards. But if yeah. I'm just going to say, you know, I think I'm going to throw some chicken, some tandoori, some garlic in a pot. Let's see where this goes. Mm-hmm. Then all I'm hoping for is that it tastes good. Yeah, It may look terrible. It may be something I can never duplicate again or make for anybody else because I really didn't think about it very much. I just threw them in a pot. But if I thought about it, I could duplicate it. It's replicable and I could take it bigger than me. 
yeah very well explained i think it is uh, so clear based on the life stage you have aligned the pillars of the wealth management this is so good and talking about the me mindset and uh, a while ago you mentioned that the people get into this constant comparison mode and they also follow the herd mentality kind of thing so how can someone avoid this common financial pitfalls like uh, adopting a group think approach or investing with emotion so there are two things it's these are great questions by the way mm-hmm. there are two things that we do as human beings that make that turn our brain into your your word group think they yeah. make us want to be part of the pack mm-hmm. and the first one is television television watch teaches us to want to be like the people on tv yeah we're in that mode they're successful they're in hollywood they've got these big houses they've got the You know, the wherever they are in the world, they've got, you know, they're George Clooney. They've got mm-hmm. nine houses around the world. All right. And and that's what that does. And so we become envious. So envy is a word you want to avoid because envy makes you do things for material reasons. I You're driving a, a, a beautiful Lamborghini, a beautiful Porsche. I want to be just like you because I envy you. Yeah. In reality, that's not right for me at all. Yeah. I want to be in a nice SUV where I could take my family camping. Mm-hmm. Now that's right for me. But if I'm doing it because of you, I've got a two-seater sports car because you have one. So that's envy. The second thing that is your enemy in in group think is social media. Mm. Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, whatever we want to use as far as different search engines, it, or not search engines, but different media outlets, they make us think the way people are posting. and it makes everything that we look at a highlight reel of somebody else's life. Yeah. And therefore everybody's having a better time in life but me. Everybody's <laughs> got a nicer car, a nicer vacation, a nicer wedding for their kids, a nicer this. That is put you back in the envy world. So I was just, you know, you're in India. I just came back from Cabo, Mexico. Mm-hmm. I didn't know when I was down there what an enormous global destination is that Mexico has become, especially for people from your country. Yeah. You yeah. And I would, they had four Indian weddings while I was there. Mm, Beautiful. Wow. Three days, three, four days, just gorgeous, gorgeous weddings. So I, I got an opportunity to talk to one of the fathers. I see. Mm-hmm. And he was the one explaining about Mexico and, and culture and how this works. And I, cause I asked him, well, how you ended up in, in Mexico in Cabo. And he said, and he explained it. And I, I said, so did you bring everybody here? He said, look, my obligation to my family is to have everybody related to me. Mm-hmm. And everybody is a family friend or their friend to be at this wedding. Whether they could afford it or not, I made it happen for them. Wow. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so I said, oh, pretty nice. And I said, obviously, he's very successful and wealthy and, and so forth. Yeah. And I said, so how much did this wedding cost you? Mm-hmm. And he said, well, that's an easy thing because... I, I I know the math very well. I said, how much is it? $1.2 million. Wow. <laughs> wow. And it was gorgeous. I went to a wedding in, um, uh, uh, Indian wedding in uh, San Diego. They had Indi- they had elephants there. Oh, wow. The bride and groom came in on elephants. <laughs> <laughs> so you can spend a lot of money on these things. But we talked a little bit more. And in the U.S., we have a phrase that says, stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, stop mm-hmm. trying to envy everybody around you and do them one up. I'm sure you have a phrase similar to that. That's envy. That's a bad thing. He should have done, well, he did maybe what was right for him. What's right for me was my dear, through my daughter's wedding was a totally different look because the quality of the marriage has nothing to do with the wedding. Mm. And I want to make sure that they understood that whether you elope or whether we spend this enormous amount of money, The, your marriage has nothing to do with that. As a matter of fact, we have another phrase in the States that says the quality of your, ma- of your marriage is to inversely, directly proportional to the amount of money spent on your marriage. Mm-hmm. So the bigger the wedding, the more ostentatious, the more group think it is, the worse your marriage is going to be because it's going to turn you into a me person. But this yeah. is about me. You've got to meet my needs. You've got to do what's right for me. Mm-hmm. And that's not how relationships and that's not how leadership is. That's not how your business is going to thrive. Your family definitely won't thrive like that. Uh, you got to think differently. Yeah. I, I think you have touched upon the right card. 
in india like people spend a lot lavishly on those weddings and for example if somebody's daughter or son is getting married and uh, whoever attends that they tend to surpass them in terms of expenses and make it further grand celebration yeah that that makes sense i think uh, yeah this is uh, something which we can avoid in the sense the group think process com- competing on things that should not be the thought of right yeah uh, that that's a great point now let's uh, move ahead and talk about the uh, creating the right mindset to achieve the financial freedom because you have insisted on that as part of the four pillars as well right so how can someone really create that mindset so let's start again great question let's start with being a student mm-hmm. you know we go to we, we go to all the primary schools and high schools and now you go to a secondary school a college or a technical school whatever you do and then you start your path yeah and you and you've been told through ages 5 to 18 or 5 to 22 to be a, to be a student to do well to get good grades get a good job think out of the box think think you've been told that the trouble is that most of us stop thinking as students at about 22 or 24 years old mm-hmm. you can't do that so the first thing you need to do to be to succeed is be a student of everybody who's come before you Yeah. So if I want to be a great political leader, I need to be a student of history and yeah. other political leaders or I'm just going to make stupid mistakes and stupid decisions. In business that's the same way. How do I think wh- what other people I see with other people done? You mentioned in one of the words earlier books was one of your key words that you asked me. All these things are written down. And today we live in a world of podcasts. Yeah. Uh, and they're everywhere. I have I think 55 podcasts out called Meet the Expert with Elliot Callan. They're free. They're on all the podcast programs that you could think of. And they talk about entrepreneurship. They talk about what you're talking about. It's great. We're the fourth largest financial podcast globally now. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Meet the Expert with Elliot Callan. They're great. We get people to think this is what's going on in the marketplace. This is what's happening around you. So become a student of that. great leaders are great students yeah and they're students mm-hmm. of all types of things um i think history is one of my history is my favorite single subject i love studying what great leaders have done i want to understand more of what they've done because i can apply that in business i can think critically and that's a big word because in the, in the global world where you and i live critical thinking is not taken for granted any longer as it was just 100 years ago 100 yeah. years ago particularly in in Europe and more in Europe than anywhere else maybe on earth is critical thinking was cherished and then group think was the common way thinking yeah today critical thinking is so important because critical thinking makes me for you I mean let's say you and I are discussing a subject yeah. that could be po- politics history or business it doesn't matter it's me understanding your perspective and how I can grow from your perspective i don't have to agree with any part of it critical thinking does not me- mean getting rid of my opinion and only inc- incorporating yours it means understanding your opinion mm-hmm. and that makes me much more of a non-judgmental accepting person where i can learn and grow in a business that's so important because you probably did not invent the business you're in the job you have and so forth you're probably growing on the backs of people before you or next to you and you could learn so much from them and you could learn great people skills with critical thinking with you know you and I are having an interactive conversation if this yeah. was just one sided it could end up that if i'm doing all the talking i'm very happy i'm sorry you didn't get more in <laughs> if you're doing all the talking i might be sitting here saying why doesn't he let me speak yeah but critical thinking is understanding both of those we mm-hmm. both bring value to the table and we can still completely disagree be 180 degrees opposite on every point of view assuming none of the points of view are violent or they they ruin people's lives but we could be completely different and still be truly understanding and in a great place with each other i have friends that politically in the us which in the united states in the last decade has become very polarized i still have so many friends that we completely disagree with politically and we said let's put that aside and be friends mm-hmm. but in the us in the last 10 years especially during the last presidential administration if people didn't agree with you they didn't want to be your friends anymore that's horrible <laughs> that's horrible 
got it <laughs> okay you're moving on to the next one how can someone efficiently invest to give the highest probability of achieving the retirement objective and with the lowest possible risk i think it, people might be looking for answers to this question right so let, let's talk about risk for a second right. let's define yeah. risk sure risk is not just not having enough money mm. we think of everybody thinks in those terms mm. risk is also running out of money at some point like i've got enough money today but my expenses got out of control or my health went so far downhill that i've had to use up all my savings to what mm-hmm. for whatever reason risk is inflation growing faster than my ability to keep up with it mm. risk is i can't afford things anymore so i've got to change my lifestyle where yesterday i ate really good gourmet food and today now i can't afford that that's risk on there Mm. So if we there's a lot of types of risk. So if I take my left hand, not politics, but just take my left hand for a moment and I say I want the least amount of risk that I can have, then I want to invest my money in things that provide me some type of guaranteed income. 4%, 5%, 6%. Mm-hmm. Those are US treasuries. Those are global or US bonds. Those are corporate bonds. Those are instruments that pay dividends. some of those those may be option type of instruments where i can buy options on th- or somebody else is buying options on things and i can capitalize that pay now 7 to 11%. Those are very low risk. They're not zero risk. If you want zero risk, then you're probably yeah. buying a US treasury because that's the consider the lowest risk investment in the world, United mm-hmm. States treasury and bills pay more than bonds and notes today. Short term outpaces long term today. It's not supposed to be like that. but that's called an inverted curve and that's the world we live in. But and then if you go up the risk scale at that point to balanced and conservative and moderate, you're just taking more risk because I want to out want to outpace inflation. I want to mm-hmm. I'm thinking about having enough money at the end of my own personal rainbow at 65 or 70 or 55 whenever there's I want to beat inflation and the markets. And then if I get aggressive, I'm really going to beat it, but now I'm going to become more volatile in the markets. I'm going to mm-hmm. have bigger swings for instance. Last year my um it's called sector select or a uh, very aggressive portfolio in 2021 went up almost 60%. Staggering mm-hmm. good. But it went down in 22 40%. And now it's up 40% this year. So that's too much for a lot of people. That's even too much for me personally. I don't invest in that portfolio for mine. because it's just the zig and the zags are too great to mm. do that. So I want to invest in something that's still has growth potential but the the ride is a little more even. So let's look at it in terms of the roller coaster versus the merry-go-round. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. roller coaster is aggressive growth. Super yeah. duper highs, super duper downs. But at the end, we know there's an end to this ride. So we got to be prepared. The merry-go-round is I get on my horse or I get on my carriage and i end up in the exact same place where i started it's there's no risk i'm not going to fall off my horse <laughs> not going to get too fast as a matter of fact it goes the exact same speed for yeah. every single person on that horse now it's faster not slow that's super low risk that's my income portfolio mm-hmm. i'm doing that and then the roller coaster's my aggressive growth portfolio yeah. and everywhere in between there is where we can capitalize because they all can be fun and they all have different rides. So we got to find out first the vein what kind of person you are. Like, mm-hmm. Are you a low risk taker? Are you a moderate risk taker? Are you somewhere between? Are you an aggressive person that doesn't wake up in the middle night wanting to dr- drive the car off the bridge because you just heard the US Dow went down by 500 points or the Indian stock market had a major correction or the German uh, the euro crashed in the eurozone and so is, is that going to drive you nuts i had somebody call me up at 4 in the morning a few years ago mm-hmm. and and we keep our phones on 24/7 it's a concierge service that's available 24/7 to our clients and he called me up and he was watching uh, either fox business or cnbc business in the united states and he saw that the tokyo exchange crashed mm-hmm. crashed and he couldn't sleep because he was thinking how much money he had internationally which maybe in his case was in Japan maybe 5%. Mhm. But he didn't know that. And he called me up at 4 in the morning he said I can't sleep. Thailand is going down, Japan just crashed. Everything in the far east is going down. 
China could be out of business by the end of the week. The world's going to go down. India could close its borders by Thursday and have an internal revolution. Pakistan and India are going to go to war. China and Japan are going to go to war. My world's coming to an end. What are we going to do about it? He was in total panic mode. Total panic mode. Mm -hmm. That's a bad way to invest. And I actually yeah. suggested to him that we should just buy a CD that pays 4% and just sit there and turn the television off so you can enjoy life a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So for him, he learned a valuable lesson that he's a zero risk taker, zero mm -hmm. risk taker. Yeah. And, and I know in India, you're driving a lot. There are accidents in the U S you have a higher likelihood of dying in a highway car crash yeah. than you have of losing all of your money. Mm -hmm. It's not an interesting mm -hmm. risk. Every time I drive home to work, I have a better chance of dying or being in a major car accident than I do of losing my money in the stock market. Mm -hmm. But we don't talk yeah. about that very much. Yeah. Great, great metaphors. And I, I loved the, the way you have explained it. And with that, let's move to the next question. Can you... You mentioned about your podcast, Ex uh, Meet the Expert with Elliot Callen. I think you have released about 55 episodes. So out of those 55 episodes, which one stands out? Like which one is your most favorite? I think what I really like is learning about subjects that I don't know much about. Mm -hmm. For instance, we 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 just got one coming up on AI and robotics. Mm -hmm. We did one recently that I liked a lot on the future of electric of the electric car. Is there really the future that you and I hear about on TV and radio compared with that? Um, you know, the, the United States citizens, uh, we have the luxury mm. of think of, of looking outside and thinking in our lone little box about electric, the electrical grid and power and things like that. You coming, you're living in India where you're trying to catch up yep. to the U S and you're not going to do it with electrical power. You're going to have to do it with a power grid and oil and gas and fossil fuels and not solar. Well, I've got people thinking, if it's not solar, why Why isn't everything solar? Why isn't everything wind? And that's not the real world. Yeah. So I'm, I'm fascinated with how the world works in mm -hmm. so many ways and not just the U.S. So I love power and robotics and AI and the future of where things are going. So in, in, in soccer terms, um, it's thinking if I'm playing soccer, I can either follow the ball mm -hmm. or I could be where the, be in my spot where the ball is going to be going. If I'm the forward or the center, I want to be where the ball's going. Otherwise, I'm always following the ball and I'm never going to have that opportunity. But mm -hmm. I'm, if I'm there and I'm in the right spot and I get myself open, that's kind of how I look at investing. In hockey terms, we want to we say go where the puck is going. In soccer terms, is where where is the ball going to be in about thirty five seconds? Mm -hmm. And if you are there, you're the winning scorer. Mm -hmm. That's kind of investing. Go yeah. where the future is, not where it's been. Uh, we had an incredible conversation so far, Elliot, and uh, I thoroughly learned a lot of stuff and all your analogies are really great and also i love the metaphors and it's time to add some excitement to the episode and get ready as we dive into a series of intriguing rapid fire questions this is the second one to spice up the episode further and if you are ready let's dive in let's do it okay here comes my first bullet if you could have one gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it what would it say think think, think. Oh. Think that by the way, that that word think was invented by in corporate America, was invented by Tom Watson, senior, mm. who was the founder of IBM, mm. and he had it above his desk. Oh wow. Thanks for sharing that history as well. <laughs> yeah. And the next one is uh, time travel to past or future and why. Oh my goodness, I would love to time travel. To me, I, I would want to go sit back uh, and meet with the world's the US's great original leaders. Not today, but people from hundreds or thousands years ago to learn what made them tick. Mm. And of course, who wouldn't want to look at a crystal ball at the future? But to me, I want to build on your character and your success and learn from it mm. so I can enjoy your success and not make the same mistakes. Oh, wow. uh, super. And can you describe yourself in just one word? Honest. Okay. And what is the weirdest thing that you have ever eaten? 
what, I'm, what are the weirdest thing I've ever eaten? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you know. I, I the world is full of worms and crawfish and weird <laughs> stuff. Like that I, I when when I was young, uh, I'm gonna ma I'll make fun of myself that we were jealous of the dog getting dog bones all the time. So my friends and I used to go eat, sneak in to the dog bones and eat their all their dog bones. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Moving to the next one. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? It would be healing. I love the power to heal the broken heart and a broken spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the last one, uh, what is one electronic gadget that you would like to see or invent yourself? Oh, I, I would like to see the end of the cell phone and have it replaced with something that has much more measurable success, whether it be in my glasses. I mean, I know this is coming that we're going to walk around with glasses and everything in our cell phone won't exist. I don't think in 10 years we have this. Yeah, it's over. It's somewhere else. Um, I I think that's just pretty amazing. But what that does is it puts us in touch mm -hmm. in ways that maybe not is going to be good. And and the world is spinning so fast um, that that just the same problems. You know, in the U.S., I run a charity called The Brighter Day at BrighterDay.info. This the the cell phone is the enemy of today's teens. Absolutely. Now, yeah. So if your teenager wants to do a report on Washington, D.C., or my teenager wants to do a report on New Delhi, it takes them five or 10 minutes to get all that information to do a report. And if you add AI to it, the AI report will do the re will do it. Uh, that's the good side of it. What's the bad side of it? Everybody's having a better time than them. Yeah. It's, the, the negative outweighs the positive. And I'd like to see we where we come up with the idea that the positive outweighs the negative. You can never get rid of the negative, but the but the uh, the positive gotta outweigh the negative. Yeah, and after all, all these uh, social media platforms are making them further addictive, and they are more addictive and more dangerous than cocaine. <laughs> That's what if I can call they it. They are, and, and and you know, you and I are going through life in a probably in a very positive path. Yeah, but I feel like we're being bombarded. Yeah. With cannon fire, with 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 big cannons, mm -hmm. all the time to try to get us off that road, and fall into a pit, and wallow in sorrow, and wallow in that envy that we talked about earlier there, and not move forward. And I think it's you and I are at least smart enough to understand that the younger you are and the more inexperienced you are in life, and the less your brain is developed with experiences, the more you're prone to fall into these pits and sometimes never get out. Absolutely. Yeah, co conquer with you. And it is not just the teens, but people of all ages are getting addicted to this phone. And uh, I, I think it has to come to an end. But I, I, I don't know, the future is uh, something uh, which is unpredictable and how things are going to change. At least I see a lot of negatives, as you mentioned, it has to come down. There, there should be one device which will... Yeah, I'll, tell you funny, I'll tell you a yeah. funny story. My, my daughter, years ago, she was about mm -hmm. 20 three years old at that time, mm -hmm. she threw her first dinner party for her friend. She was all excited. I love to cook. And she said, Dad, I'm going to have eight people over my over your house at the dining room table. I'm going to do the cooking, the cleaning. I'm really excited about this night. And so I said, good, we're going to go out to a movie. You, you eight people have a good time. I'll text <laughs> you on the way home to make sure it's okay to come home. Yeah. She said, thank you. That sounds great. I came home and she was all upset. I mm -hmm. said, what happened? Did you? Did you burn the food? Did it just I mean these things happen? And she said, no. All of a sudden, we're about halfway through dinner and a conversation stopped because everybody was on her cell phone. And then I <laughs> said, and then I realized that some of them were texting each other to talk about the other person and if they were having a good time. Oh my God. And I said, <laughs> and I said, you just learned that the cell phone is your enemy. Yeah. That's what that was your lesson, is that I can't. Say, Naveen, I've got a question for you. I'm really challenged by this. I can't do that. I have to text you and say, Naveen, are you having a good time? And then you have to text me back saying, well, I'm having a good time, but not with this person. That's bad. That's just bad all the way around. Because their attention is always on the reels, not the real. Right. <laughs> Get real is a better way of saying it. Yeah, good one, good one. And, and uh, Elliot, let's uh, get back to the mainstream. What will be your key message to our audience who are aspiring to make begin their careers or lives? Good. Come up, great question again. The key word here for everybody who's young 
is mm. vision. Develop a personal vision. You'll develop a corporate vision if you start your business. I hope you do, because if you don't, you got no, you can't measure success. Yeah. But what does the vision look like for you personally? You know, because if you focus on that vision your entire life, and you could change it, by the way, yeah. then every time you get hit in the head with a piece of wood because things aren't going well, and you will, because life mm -hmm. is filled with zigzags, yeah. that vision will keep you back, will give you the fortitude and the character and the strength and the perseverance. The words we talked about earlier, they all emanate and yeah. evolve from having some type of vision in life. And the vision can change and alter because your life will change and alter, but you never lose having a vision. Thank you so much. And uh, how is your experience being hosted on the Guiding West platform? I, I'm really pleased. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm pleased. I think that anytime you are looking to grow and looking to incorporate new technologies and looking to deal with people, and if you like people, yeah. So dealing with people is not a challenge. Not everybody likes people. Some people are engineers and they like mechanical things and they can't stand people. I, I had an ex-business partner. He liked fish and animals, couldn't stand people. <laughs> but if you like people and you incorporate the best of people, you have to grow because yeah. you're learning from everybody around you. Absolutely. Concur with you. And I'm also uh, uh, really grateful uh, to have you join as my guest today. And a uh, lot of learning, a lot of key takeaways. And thank you so much for your time. And thank you for all the wonderful insights that you have shared today, Elliot. Thank you so much for having me on. I love this. And I can't wait for my viewers to watch you. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, looking forward to it. And uh, friends, that was our episode with Elliot Callan. And before we dive into the exciting trivia section, we have a small request for you. If you haven't already, we kindly invite you to subscribe to our podcast from wherever you have tuned into. And uh, by subscribing, You'll stay updated with our latest episodes and ensuring that you never miss out on valuable content. And if you have enjoyed this episode and found it beneficial, we would be immensely grateful if you could share it with at least three of your friends or colleagues who can benefit from the guiding voice. So please spread the knowledge and empower others to learn and grow just like you. And your support means the world to us. Not only will your friends gain new insights, but we'll also gain new subscribers, allowing us to continue producing valuable content for you and our growing community. Thank you in advance for your support. And now let's embark on this journey of knowledge together. So let's cruise into the trivia segment. Today we had a wonderful conversation about four pillars of the wealth management. And Elliot has shared a lot of uh, uh, great tips in terms of how somebody can grow their wealth by proper planning. So today I thought I would present you something around global retirement planning related stuff. And according to the Global Retirement Index 2021, which was released by Natrix's investment managers, Switzerland is the country which ranks first in the global retirement readiness with a score of 85.7 out of 100. And uh, you know, the retirement age varies from country to country for example japan has the official retirement age of 65 for men and 60 for women while in the united states the full retirement age for social security benefits is gradually increasing to 67 for those who are born in 1960 or later and also a study conducted by the world economic forum estimated that the global retirement savings gap the shortfall between what people have saved for their retirement and what they will actually need will reach $400 trillion by 2050. That's alarming number. And the average retirement age worldwide is approximately 64. And in some countries like uh, Mexico and Greece, the average retirement age is lower. While in others like Norway and Iceland, it is higher. So my question is, what are you doing? to plan your retirement so that you don't have any gap in terms of what you plan versus what you have to actually spend. And in addition to that, if you have any secrets related to wealth management, feel free to drop your comments if you're watching it in on YouTube. Or if you have found this episode on social media platform, feel free to drop your messages there. We would be happy to review. And folks, that's a wrap for today's episode. We sincerely appreciate you tuning in and being part of our incredible community. And we would also love to hear from you 
Your feedback and ideas mean the world to us. Please do not hesitate to share your topic recommendations as well as suggestions for guest speakers through our social media channels or by dropping us an email at theguidingvoiceforyou@gmail.com. Remember, together we can create content that truly resonates with you. I am your host Navin Samala, a fellow professional and an insatiable learner. My mission is to make the world a better place through meaningful conversations. that have a lasting impact on your career and life and stay connected with us as we continue this enlightening journey together and until we meet again take care folks stay inspired and also remember the best is yet to come bye for now